right. AU appoints Adama Deng as special envoy to combat genocide mass atrocities in Africa. This is his face and uh, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahamad, on Saturday appointed Adama Deng of Senegal as the first AU special envoy for the prevention of uh, the crime of genocide and other mass atrocities at the age of 55 or at the 55 member continental organization's first special envoy for the prevention of the crime of genocide and other mass atrocities Deng will drive the au's agenda to combat the ideology of hate and genocide on the african continent faki said this on x formerly twitter on saturday Deng has previously served as the former united nations secretary general ban ki-moon's special advisor on the prevention of genocide as a legal and human rights expert, Deng has a distinguished career in contributing to the strengthening of the rule of law, fighting impunity and promoting capacity building in the area of judicial and democratic institutions, including through fact-finding missions, publications and media, according to the union. Uh, Deng, or that is you and I should say, Deng's appointment came as the AU is set to hold a high-level event in relation to, of course, what we are observing this week, 30th commemoration of the 1994 genocide against Tutsis in Rwanda. Remember, unite, renew. All right. Any idea? I think we had uh, Adama Deng here. Was it in 2018 in the country at the Strathmore University? There was a conference uh, on uh, terrorism and uh, I think also uh, just uh, religious extremism as well. Adama Deng. Uh, Previously, as we've mentioned, has been working uh, as advisor to no. Ban Ki Moon. But we have a Kenyan who has actually picked over from Adama Dien. No. And that is Anne, if you may remember. Anne Wairimo. Anne Derito. She's at Anne the Derito, UN. yes. She's at the UN. She's, she's, she's at the UN. She's the one who picked over from, she's, she's, from this particular docket. Yeah, yeah, she's now the special advisor to the Secretary General. To the Secretary General, yeah. that is Antonio yeah. Guterres. Yeah. So yes. she, she picked over from uh, Adama Dien. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. But what do you think about this particular office now? That uh, is it coming way too late <laughs> from the yeah. African Union? It's a good uh, job it, it, for somebody. Uh, beyond that, it's to do what? How much access does this fellow have to do? over the presidents of the various countries? Because those are the perpetrators of the crimes. Does he have access? Can he could persuade them to behave properly? What is he going to be doing? But it's a good job. So you don't think we need uh, someone to really be uh, looking? Uh, Just listening to what Kagame has been raising mm -hmm. concerning, oh, where we are at, uh, why genocide has not been, uh, you know, in the mouth of the U.S. for, for the longest time since, the, you know, 30 years ago when the perpetrators of this man's inhumanity to man happened in Rwanda. And now no one is speaking about it. Do, don't you think maybe he will be a good voice you know, to push the envelope and also to raise awareness of these mass atrocities that we can see still happening in, in Africa? I mean, what is happening in Darfur? What is happening in South Sudan? We are not even... Those pictures are very Who graphic. Who is going to be what? his audience? You know, Deepal, mm. uh, you're confusing uh, something here. Um, uh, Diang is a good office person. Excellent, uh, with all the credentials and understanding. Uh, what Prof is saying, which I concur with, is uh, they're all needed uh, probably somebody at the level of, uh, let's say, the former president of Nigeria, Olesegunna mm -hmm. Pansanjo, uh, who uh, will take a phone and ring President Ruto and say, Your Excellency, I'm passing by Nairobi and I would wish to have a meeting with you. Um, Diang, I think, belongs to the classroom. I could wish to invite him to speak to my students of armed conflicts and peace studies on, on, on how to prevent uh, uh, genocides in Africa and have a big conference in the corridors of the University of Nairobi. Uh, but as to having a political clout uh, that will make things move, uh, go, go to Sesekedi, shuttle between Kagame and Sesekedi, and uh, fly down to South Africa, and 
no. Uh, so it's all about that. Maybe he needed to work uh, as a personal assistant to somebody else who will be doing this political dimension of the kind of work that he has been given. That is my very considered opinion. So it is all about the political imports that uh, he is bereft, bereft of, that yeah. he can't really bring on the table. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to matters, academia... Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've hosted uh, Adama mm -hmm. Deng, I think, uh, yeah. for five years back, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he's fully attuned to the, 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 the issues of atrocities and genocide. Yeah. 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 Right, let's see from uh, Naomi Dama. Well, um, not to have a contrary opinion to, to my colleagues, uh, that office is needed uh, here in Africa. Uh, and the reason why we are at a pivotal point of change and some really ugly things mm. that, that has a potential to happen here. Uh, there is a, an, a, a potential for uh, Congo, uh, that whole uh, uh, place to become one of the, 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 the worst atrocity of historical proportion in Kenya, uh, in, in Africa. Uh, when you have the ex-Wagner, uh, the rest of the world uh, competing, you know, for, for, for the loot in that area. Nobody's documenting. UN uh, forces are sent out, African forces are going in. This need a secretariat. This need a really compelling highly sophisticated information based to document everything as it happened and somebody else to, um, and uh, that will be Deng's responsibility uh, to project that image among Africa and UN board. Mm -hmm. It is necessary, but it cannot happen unless there is a really powerful uh, secretariat assembled to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, the, not disagreeing with my, my colleagues here, but, but I, I'm seeing a necessary, that it is a necessary. Order. Of course you're disagreeing with what Professor Mashare is yeah. saying, yeah, because yeah. He's, he's asking what for. Yeah. But uh, in light of where we are coming from uh, yeah. as Africa, yeah. Professor Mashari, you're the one who's speaking from both sides of the mouth. Because when we began this particular show, you were castigating, uh, you know, UN mm -hmm. under the leadership of Kofi Annan <laughs> and how they never did anything. Uh, we know, never, no one responded. The world never actually responded at the end of the day. Yeah. Now we, you, we, we have an office. Instead of looking outside Africa for other voices to intervene for us, we are picking our own and we're installing that's our that's own at the end of the day. That's and you're asking that's what that's for. That's a good comment. So, a, so I'm inclined to wonder. There's a small problem with it. Which is? See, I raise a question, who is the audience mm -hmm. for this office? Mm -hmm. And what access does this person have? That is Where it point. matters. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Can he pick a phone and say, uh, William Ruto, mm -hmm. how are you? I want to <laughs> ask you why is this <laughs> happening in your yeah, place? No? Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Why? He can't. Then you look at it, who is funding it? Mm -hmm. The AU itself has a problem does not fund itself. Yeah. It's being directed yeah. from some, <laughs> some other corners. Mm. You know, so you say even that office, what is it going to be doing? Mm. It's good, I agree with the prof here. Yes, we need some doc documentation mm. of this, yeah, this happened, this happened. And I think we also have enough documentation on Rwanda and other places. Mm. The documentation offices we have. Mm -hmm. But the effectiveness is the issue. What is this person going to be doing to prevent, not to document, to prevent something happening? The signs for the Rwandan genocide were there before it happened. Mm. The French were busy training the inter and all those things. Even here in Kenya, when we've had some serious issues, the signs were there. The 207 was not an accident because people were training in different parts of the country, and it was not, mm -hmm. it was not, mm -hmm. and it was not what? It was not stopped. So the point is, how effective is this office going to be? What access does it have? If it's a question of documenting mm -hmm. events, that's okay. Uh, 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 maybe we, I mean, maybe we need to begin, maybe we, 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 begin, we begin to look from where Adama Deng is coming from, with, with the effectiveness of the office from the UN, where Andritu is right now. Mm -hmm.
Are we, are we in any way feeling the discernible difference of this office from Andy Ritu or Adama Dieng? What, what sort of preventative measures were there even before uh, Adama Dieng? I don't know if it came, his appointment came afterwards yeah, or I have not even seen, I've not even seen the, the face of Andy Ritu uh, with this Kuibuka. That it, I think she would have been... I think she had a problem uh, with the Gaza. The people were trying to blame her for some things. <laughs> <laughs> she had a problem with Gaza. You know? There, there were some complaints about I've not, about. Okay, we'll come to that when you're talking about it. Spoken. Yeah. You've not spoken. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, you haven't. No, no. Yeah. I and I maybe I should have had a break. <laughs> Officially. Okay. Yeah. Now let me say this: <laughs> that uh, there are two there are two issues here. Uh, one is doing what others are doing. Uh, all men are wearing one shirt and red ties and blue suits or black suits. Looking nice. Therefore, they're looking nice, and therefore it's good that I also have a suit. <laughs> and, and, and therefore, the AU, uh, all uh, organizations, regional and global, are having offices of the prevention of genocide. So the AU need to have that as well, and therefore you have it. And then we, we, we come to the KTN and talk about it, and therefore we see Africa is progressing well. I, 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 th I think this, this, this should be more serious than that. The Office of Prevention of Crime and Genocide should firmly be within the African Union early warning mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, th there is an early warning mechanism, which is not just about genocide. It's also about catastrophe. Uh, it's also about you know, uh, conflicts erupting mm -hmm. in any part of, the, of Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's there. And, and that particular office, together with now the political office uh, within the African Union, are responsible for what we are calling silencing the guns, mm -hmm. which is a big yes. topic within the African Union. I, I think the, the big question would be uh, what added value addition this office has and who wrote it for its in introduction to the African Union. It's not, it's not wrong, it's, it's okay, but for what purpose? So I would like to see the terms of reference for this and whether we are deep, deep, uh, simply transferring a responsibility from the UN to the African Union without any forethought. Mm. Uh, and as you have rightly asked, what difference has the prevention of genocide within the United Nations, the ad special advisors made? And they need to find herself with a lot of, in a lot of problems mm -hmm. over yes. Gaza because you, 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 are a, you are a mute about what is happening in Gaza. Uh, yet this is your office that's supposed to be on rooftops shouting about what is happening mm -hmm. as genocide because that's what, mm -hmm. uh, what it was. You, you are silent on many other cases and we have not seen this high profile of prevention of genocide from the UN in the Rwandis issue now. Uh, in fact, what Kagame is saying is what that office should be saying. Mm -hmm. And that leads to what uh, Professor Masharia Munen has uh, in, said here, that uh, how effective is this office going to be? Because the perpetrators of genocide in this world, in this part of the world, in Africa continent, we know, are the profiteers, the Europeans, who want conflict in Congo so that they can farm, uh, they can get the uh, uh, uranium and I mean, I mean, uh, what called cobalt and other precious minerals. They are the ones in Niger over uranium. The one, ones in Mali. They are ones in Chad, which has become a killing field because of oil and other precious minerals, uranium, titanium, and so on. So in other words, the concept of genocide in Africa and its perpetrators is more complex than the African Union. And I think what would have happened is to strengthen the African Union's early warning. Because mm. the word prevention mm. of genocide is itself within the, the framework of early warning. Mm. So wh why would we want to get to the specifics? We talk about milk and we've not talked about cows. In that illogicality is what we are, we are really uh, talking about. And in, the, in this particular place, therefore, I would, I would agree that it's going to be a huge contribution mm -hmm. to the in, information gathering 
uh, to support the early warning okay. mechanisms of the mm. African Union. Mm. Beyond that, it is simply a flower, and I don't know why we are discussing it here. This is a small bureaucratic <laughs> office within the EU. <laughs> that's which, why we should, we should not waste our time, really. <laughs> that's why I said the, the, change, the change of topics is so important. Yeah, that's why I said deeper. No, no, no. You, you cannot uh, underplay no, no, where, 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 where we're actually coming from with the general service. No, that's why I said. So no, 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 but that's what no, the early warning is about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that, that's why I said earlier, uh, if I may give unsolicited advice to, yes. to the AU, yes. uh, if, if Diang was going to head uh, a, a serious resource center uh, yes. for the African uh, Union uh, for collecting and analyzing, interpreting information yes. to come up with policy previews yes. uh, and link up with different universities uh, where we are teaching armed conflicts, peace mm -hmm. studies, uh, uh, you, you, you know, it, it would be a wonderful colleague. Uh, in, in that sense. Uh, but, um, uh, uh, you, you know, the way things stand, in my view, I agree with uh, Professor Kawanja here, uh, th this is just copy and, and, and peace. And, peace, and, and yes. uh, the African Union uh, is actually historically has that characteristic. When Europe became EU, uh, we, we changed from OAU to AU. AU. Uh, is there a fundamental difference between uh, OAU and AU? Just if you the, ask me as a historian, they remove no. all of O. Uh, they remove the O. And left it with uh, the first letter of my surname, mm. and they remained with the AU. But, but in terms of branding, mm. you, you know, they, there was a uh, the letterheads, for, for the logo. Uh, <laughs> like some somebody will make a little money. Go beyond <laughs> branding. <laughs> well, uh, it has continued being uh, uh, what I loosely call a toothless uh, bulldog, well, 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 which well, depends on the West for funding and many other uh, uh, logistics. We, yeah. we have several standby forces. Uh, mm, yes. The East African one is supposed to be the best mm. in the continent. Eh? Mm. Mm. Then you have the Southern African one, or the Western African one, you have some, uh, about four or five of them. Mm. And they have military establishments. Mm -hmm. And in theory, they are supposed to stop this kind of thing. Yes. So we already have something. Yeah, yeah. Now, is he going to strengthen these organizations? Yeah, well, yeah. we'll get it from the policy brief. <laughs> well, let me give another <laughs> policy brief as well. Moving on, <laughs> still on Rwanda. Yeah, so what we are saying is, is this. The African Union and I participated in drafting the papers that established the, uh, the uh, protocol establishing the uh, Peace and Security Council of the African Union. Mm -hmm. It's a very comprehensive mechanism, what we call the African Peace and Security Architecture. And that architecture uh, has two important things to, to highlight here. One is the Council of the Wise, which is the, basically the, the team that moves in to quell uh, if there is a conflict coming in. That's the Council of Wise that we're asking about. Uh, Uru Kenyatta should he join yes, the Council uh, of Wise yes, yes. when we began. When began. Yes. So that Council of the Wise of the African Union is critical. Then there is a warning mechanism, which is a research kind of a think tank, uh, plus now the capacity to share that information widely so that uh, we know that a genocide is in the offing in Dafu, and therefore these are the actors, and this is how we should do it. So there is that early warning mechanism. That early warning mechanism is also in IGAD. Mm -hmm. IGAD has yeah. um, an early warning mechanism, which is even more comprehensive because it's dealing with other matters like crocasts, innovation are coming. We have issues of these, you know, things are like, like the climate center they, here. They open in Nairobi in yes, 2021. Yes, yes they have for, an office yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Now, the office of the prevention of genocide is very Western sounding because we are really talking about preventing. Uh, conflict which normally leads to genocide. So why are you jumping from conflict to genocide uh, before everything else? So that's where the copy and paste is coming in. And I think what is needed is that this office, now that it is, is being created or has been created uh, by Mahamat, and Mahamat has this way of creating offices that are, that are not really in conformity with the Africa. I mean, the, the, the position that was created, I am a Kenyan and therefore I'm patriotic. The, the office that was created for his, uh, his uh, Excellency, uh, Raira Odinga, <laughs> the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I mean, there was already a, a commissioner for infrastructure, mm -hmm. and you have this towering figure from the Republic of Kenya uh, who comes and occupy an office which only comes, shows up during meetings, and then come back to Kenya. For us, it was convenient. 
But uh, Mahamat needs also to be very serious about. And he's on the way out anyway. No, no, he should be. He, he'll come down as one of the the the, the, the most uh, you know f the fading uh, leaders of that place because you are you are tampering with a system that is respected uh, by way of uh, being whims. I, I don't know whether this office was really necessary to create. Uh, if he could have not said that uh, we are strengthening our early warning capacity, early warning and early action capacity. Early warning being that mechanism of information mm -hmm. gathering and early action being the council of the wise, which has Becky uh, and other retired, Obasa Jones and others are in that particular council. Th this is where Deng would have become an executive officer mm -hmm. to support the, the, the old men yeah. in yeah. terms of information and research. Now, to get these big titles of special advisor... So, so, that, uh, so that uh, Oraila will have the political imports that uh, Adama Deng does not really have and the clout that uh, we have Professor talking about. Who? Uh -huh. Adama Deng, he yes. doesn't really have the political clout. Yeah, that no. He cannot be... Yeah, so no, no, he if he's working... Have, in, he 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 have. And, and two, yeah. the moment you appear in a country and you say, I am here to prevent genocide, who want to really have you around? <laughs> they kick, kick you out. They kick you out in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Still, you can actually not even meet a, a, a local MP if he yes. came around. Yeah, he's, because he's you cannot good. pick him out of the streets of Nairobi. Yeah, he, he, he went to parliament to see my local member of parliament. He cannot be allowed. Yeah, because that, that's for sure. What is he going to, to say he's going to do? All right. Uh, whatever. Yes, it's Mahamat it's has, it's has a, had you. It's a license to the attend the African Union. They've the had you, That's all. right? Talking about military as well. We just wanted to. I know we talk a good game about Rwanda. Anyway, this is their week, where Rwanda is planning to put m more boots on the ground if in Mozambique's oil-rich Cabo Delgado, when the SADC or SAD standby force in Mozambique, that is uh, Samim, withdraws. In about two months. A senior Rwanda Defense Force RDF commander has disclosed this and Rwanda already has a personnel count of more than 2,500 in Mozambique. Brigadier General Patrick Karuretua, who leads the Rwanda Defense Forces International Corporation, told journalists in Kigali that force, all well, that force was deployed just after the SAD Sadk bloc sent in a roughly equivalent number of soldiers. Rwanda's intervention in Mozambique is our, outside the United Nations mandate via a bilateral agreement between Maputo and Kigali. Now an overhaul of the Somalia's constitution scrapping its power sharing system and handing the president increased control is threatening to destabilize the fragile country as its wealthiest and most stable state refuses to recognize changes. The amendment risks worsening violence. The information minister from the semi-autonomous state of Quitland has warned. The current power sharing model of government, a system that ensures the country's four main clans get equal representation in parliament, will be also scrapped in place of universal suffrage. Putland, one of Somalia's five federal states, was established as a separate self governing entity in 1998 and is the country's most powerful regional administration. Shake in May 15 election. All right, before we go to Hamas, I just want us to pick the brains of our panelists on this Somali development because I think this has been simmering as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a row which is threatening now the unity of Somalia as it stands, despite the fact that we know also what is happening with Ethiopia and uh, Somalia at the end of the day. So, uh, Professor Masharia, I'll let you munch a bit, yeah. uh, but you can actually begin. Uh, no, there's um, <laughs> it's a, it's a dangerous trend. That, uh, no, he has to munch. This is a, yeah. it's a breakfast show. <laughs> I wonder why you people are not eating. <laughs> 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 eat at home before you can. Yes, no. <laughs> there's a dangerous trend mm. in the region. And so when there's... Somali officials, when they are hardly stable, want to concentrate power. 
what you have in Portland is a rebellion against that concentration of power. Mm -hmm. And it is not new. We saw it even, part of the reason uh, Abiy has a problem in Ethiopia is because of that attempt to do it, to concentrate power. Mm -hmm. There was a time when there appeared to be a, tri a, tri a triad, eh? Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia trying to concentrate power at the center, and then they, they, co they get together in the concentration of power, which then um, aroused um, resentment. And you saw what happened in um, Ethiopia, the Tigray War. Mm -hmm. It was part of that. In uh, Somalia, now you have this serious Portland rebellion. Mm. They're not rejecting the federal system the way they are going, with the autonomy. But the idea of reducing that level of autonomy is um, grating people the wrong way. Mm. We also have the same problem in Kenya here. Yeah? Because there's been an attempt to, what, to concentrate mm -hmm. power, and there's some sort of uh, question what's going on there. Eh? So it's a dangerous trend across the region that needs to be checked before it goes too far. Because the end result will then be conflict, confrontations. It might even lead to some aspect of genocide in some places, if you are not careful. And you think we don't need a Damadien? No, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't. All right, I'm we just don't need it. So, <laughs> we do. But we need to know some of these things. Eh? But our policy makers should be careful. That once in, you are in office, don't think that you are everything. Yeah. And therefore, you can force people into things that they don't want. Some very obnoxious things that lead to rebellions and wars, civil wars, and might even lead to the genocide we are worried about. Mm. So that one needs to be checked, not just in Somalia and Ethiopia, but also in Rwanda, mm. in Kenya, mm. in Uganda. <laughs> you know, all the, the whole region is in a mess mm. because of that, what Obong is talking about, strong men mentality, mm. that once you are there, then nobody should be questioning you. Mm. You just do what you want because you are there. And that seems to be happening in, in Somalia. And hence you have this uprising saying no way. Because they want to scrap some guarantees that were there, mm. were holding. In fact, some of those uh, formulas were cooked up in Nairobi. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peter, you are maybe part of that cook. <laughs> 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 they were cooked up in yeah. Nairobi so that they can have something. You can stand. confess <laughs> your sins. <laughs> yes, that's, all, that's all right. Let me, yes. Yes. Let, let, let me start, let me start let, by... Let's, let's hear from yes. uh, Noah whether we come to you. Yes. yes. I, I thought you. we were going this way. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought Noah no, has not spoken. No, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, Kagwanya, go on then. No, I just wanted to... On a humorous note, I think we have a... We, we have a comment here by one of our colleagues, uh, David Matsanga. Mm -hmm. David Matsanga on Diop. Mm -hmm. He says, Adam on, on on mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He says, Adam Adieng is a good lecturer, but cannot stop even a fly <laughs> killing someone <laughs> in Africa. That's exactly the what I said. The, 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 the French have just pressed their puppet to oversee their bad behavior in Africa. Surely? That's Matanga for you. So again, another. This is a French conspiracy. It's a francophone. He's a francophone, and he's supposed to deal with what French is. The France is doing in West Africa, mm. trying to get lead of this and that people. And uh, it, it's interesting that he's from Senegal, a country has that has declared a kind of rebellion, public rebellion against France. So it's, it's really telling. But coming back to, to Somalia, I don't want to to delve deep into it because I, I like making a statement on Somalia very very when I have done my my research uh, seriously. But one thing is very clear. Uh, I, I don't agree with uh, my my brother here uh, or. Professor Bonene, the insinuation that I, I'm the one who crafted this. <laughs> <laughs> this is based on evidence. Bonene and I don't get And even some of your previous comments. <laughs> <That's correct. laughs> and, the, and the calls on the show as well. Not yeah. only here, on the other side of the track that we used to be as well. That's all right. Now, the, the, the point is that uh, at my institute, Africa Policy Institute, the Horn of Africa is, a, is one of our empirical areas of research. And therefore, we invest a lot, both money, time, and energy. 
uh, to, to, to delve into the depth of things. So when we comment on Ethiopia, for example, we are commenting from a research perspective. The same case with the Somalia. I'm admitting that uh, the constitutional debate is still something we are going on with, uh, you know, in terms of debating and why uh, President Hassan Sheikh uh, prioritized this. If you remember President Farmajo's main mm -hmm. problem uh, with the Somalis was basically the same, same issue of the constitution. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, across the region, uh, both Somalia, Ethiopia, and even here in Kenya, is the, is the, is the debate b between the centrists, those who want to concentrate power at the center, and the, and the uh, if you wish, call them federalists, uh, those people who want to uh, disintegrate power and diffuse power into regions. And that was our debate about the counties. The, the, the Majimbo debate that gave birth to mm. now the compromise of the counties mm. Mm. was simply about do we concentrate power in what we are calling the imperial presidency or do we want to share it out across the board? The, 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 the Kenyan miracle is not about how we dissented power. We dissented power, yes, but also dissented resources. So the Kenyan kind of decentralization of power was, to, was guided by two principles. The principle one is power sharing. Principle two was wealth or resource sharing. Those are the principles, and that's what combined to create what we have today as a county. Now, in Somalia, uh, the, 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 the federal states are way, way stronger than the federal government. And the Fed, the Fed, I mean, talk about uh, Jubaland. Jubaland, in terms of its muscle resources, is way, way, way stronger than Mogadishu. Uh, the same case with Puntland. Puntland is very strong. The current president, uh, Hassan Sheikh, uh, owes a lot to his coming to power by the support of the two. Uh, the support of, uh, you know, Ahmed Madobe and uh, Said Deni in Puntland. Both, both, both basically uh, put their weight behind him uh, to be president. But there is something that comes up. Whenever, whenever you go to Vera Somalia, and you are the head of state, then you begin to answer, what am I doing here? Because the central federal government basically has, has almost no power uh, under the current s situation. And therefore, we have had this permanent tension between the federal and the, the, central, the central government. And, and that logic of decentering power versus the logic of concentrating power are in serious tension. I admire the Somali power sharing arrangement. Uh, many Somalis who are liberal, those, those who think uh, generally that uh, the, 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 the Somalia was among the first democracies, because that's a, that is the narrative, that in the 1960s, Somalia was perhaps more democratic than the United Kingdom or the whatever, because they, they elect their leaders democratically. Uh, there are those who would have that notion and, and therefore, they would want the return of the universal suffrage where every Somali uh, count as a vote. But even if we listen to critics of the Somali society, including those who admired them very much, or in terms of uh, as allies, take for example Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden's greatest complaint about Somalia was that they cannot, they, they are, their clan, they are so stuck to their clan mm. that they cannot see the universal benefit of being in a, an international quote-unquote liberation movement, which is uh, Al-Qaeda. So the, 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 and, and that was his complaint. What is it? There is a reality about Somalia that the, the clans in Somalia matter. Clans matter. And if you think otherwise, you're missing the boat. Clan is almost everything uh, for, for the Somali people. That is one. Two, they recognize other clans, and they don't wish them gone, so that they are left alone. So, what they, so the game is to ensure that other clans exist, and yours also exist and prevail. And this is what brought about the, the 4.5 uh, voting formula, or, which is a power sharing, which mm -hmm. was agreed at Bagathi. Mm -hmm. uh, by, by that time, Dibala was not there. Let's, let's be clear about it. <laughs> so when the, the 4.5... You're coming closer to the truth. Yes. <laughs> the 4.5 was crafted. I wasn't part of that game. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I have my very good friends who are there. 
uh, you know, from, from Somalia and who literally participated in the whole process. And they will tell you, the 4.5 has its own problems, but at least it recognizes the parity of the four major clans in Somalia and recognizes other smaller clans. So anything that's going to cost, uh, create stability in Somalia has to recognize the existence of Thank you. Class. Right. My music is uh, up uh, now, the indication uh, that we should be winding up. Uh, let's hear from you briefly. Uh, very briefly, uh -huh. from Prof, what Professor Kawanja is saying, undoubtedly there are some of his fingerprints in uh, uh, what is taking place in Somalia. But, but what I wanted to say, <laughs> uh, now to be uh, back to my point, what I wanted to say is that, um, you know, the, the, the sick man of Eastern Africa, is at this element, uh, only that it's now doing it internally. Uh, a few um, uh, months back, it was a conflict with Kenya over the sea boundary, and then uh, over their port with Ethiopia and, and Puntland. Uh, but the, the, the point is that um, they, they are losing sight of uh, the contribution that these strong federal states are making to the general welfare of the stability of, of Somalia, which is, in my view, supposed to be a priority. So, so I'll, I'll ask Mogadishu to focus more on uh, internal stability, uh, which is based uh, mainly, if you look at the situation through history, a loose federal system where regions have more power, more wealth than the center. Uh, th that seems to probably ultimately provide the solution to the Somalia problem. Right, thank you. All right, now, Madam, I concur. And your closing uh, remarks as well, uh, yeah, briefly. I concur that uh, Somalia is uh, fragile right now mm -hmm. uh, and, and unique in character in Africa, and it needs. Uh, more of, of a decentralized power. The ball, uh, there is, I uh, begin by saying image and substance. Uh, Kenya uh, was known as a reluctant leader in East Africa. East Africa is moving forward to become one of the most powerful <coughs> regions in the country. Leadership in Af uh, of, of the region matters. And, and substantive leadership of Kenya matters, and we need to be, uh, we need to begin to take that very seriously. Thank you. All right, Peter Kagwanya, your closing yeah. remarks. I, I think we we need to support Kagame in regard to the question of genocide. The genocide in Rwanda need to be recognized for what it was. A million people, the, largely Tutsi, uh, died, and therefore the Americans, the Westerners, and those who they, who are uh, genocide deniers. A leader need to be called out, and I think I want to, we want to encourage President Kagame to stay strong on that one, and to continue modernizing his country, but at, rest, at the same time moving it closer towards democracy. Because uh, even if uh, all the, he has all the time in the world, uh, he, he can't uh, remain in power forever. But at thank least you. he has to to move that, right, that thank direction. You. Let's hear from. Are you closing remarks? Uh, uh, well, th that is on the same lines. Uh, Kagame is right uh, when he's calling out the Americans uh, to change their narratives and to clearly come out and uh, uh, call a spade a spade, uh, not, not, uh, uh, not a big spoon. Genocide is genocide. Whatever you find it, it means one and the same thing. The annihilation of uh, a group of people for reasons political. Right, thank you. And um, I'll hasten to add uh, that uh, Kagama has done wonderfully well. Uh, I think what he needs is uh, to, 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 to prepare for his departure by creating a platform where Rwanda will continue to be a star that it is in Africa. Well, he's asked his party to give me a man. Give yes. me a man that will take over, okay. right? Yeah, there yeah, are many right. men. The, um, it's time for reflection. And the women. Uh, this time of vid. Yes. Uh, we should all be, all religions should be reflecting as to where they are going wrong. Uh -huh. and all the, those kind of things. And um, Rishi and Paul should change their act. They are not doing well. They're not doing well. They are not. Fantastic. They, and they, they should be told that. And then this idea of the jungle and the garden, mm. which Joseph Borrell talked about, mm. that we are the jungle, and they don't want the jungles in their garden. Thank you. Should be stopped. Right. And Rishi is part of that mentality. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Even as we're winding up, I just want to show you what we have here that uh, UN is warning, especially Kenya, Haitians' gangs have better weapons than national police.
<laughs> Kenya have been advised to ensure that the officers it sends to the Caribbean to restore order are well equipped with uh, good firepower. And we wish our Muslim brothers again, Eid al fitr We are standing in solidarity with our brothers in this remarkable day. Thank you for your valued company.